Hey guys, welcome to a new Minecraft video. I was checking around my channel, and I realized I haven't uploaded a video in a very long time, and that I haven't done any of the computer craft stuff that I promised earlier. So, in this video, I decided to show off one of the major updates of computer craft, and that there's these new advanced computers that can use colors, which is awesome. So I'll be showing the basics of how to program and make your own programs and use some of the default programs. So to get right into it, if you first off you haven't used Computercraft at all, you want to learn exactly how to use it, you don't know how to do anything, you might want to go help, or you just type in help. And then it'll give a, open up a little window called, well, well it'll say welcome to Craft OS. If you need help, with anything else, you can type help, then the program name for their built-in programs. You can get help with programming to learn about how to make your own. You can type help what's new to see what's in the latest versions. I'm using version 1.45. You could type slash help credits. Well, you don't have to put slash. Just help credits to learn who made it, and help index to see all the help topics. So first off, I'm going to show you guys what the programs program does. It pretty much gives you a list of the programs that are already on the computer. If you create your own program, it'll also pop up in this list, but is saved in a different spot on the computer. It's saved individually. Now, as you can see, about right here, there's a clear uh, program. That is very handy. It you run the program, it clears the screen. So you don't want all the unwanted other stuff. So now we only have the list. And there's a few games. There's a text adventure called Adventure. If you type in Adventure, you can play that. And there's one also called Worm. It's a, you, won't, you, you have to play it to, see, to understand it, really. And I believe there was one other game. Hmm. But that's pretty much it. So... Right now, I'm going to teach you how to make your own program. First off, to name your program, what you're going to start off with is you type edit, then the name of your program. So let's just do, I don't know, print test, we'll call it. And then hit enter. And you can see down here, there's a LN, that's for line, and 1. It tells you what line number you're on. So if I hit enter a few times, it brings the line number up and I can push my mouse up, uh, put my cursor up and down and it'll change through the line numbers. And you can also click to where to what line you want to go in which was just recently added in one of the recent versions. The next thing you're going to want to know is you can press control, your le left control, and you can hit either save, exit, or print. Print is for a feature that was just recently added with the new printers. You can print your text, your programming, your code with the new peripheral printer which I'll get into later on. But what we're going to want to do is save and it'll say saved to print test because that's what we named it. So now our actual program is saved with the list of programs. Now if we want to actually add something. One of the most useful things, one of the most most used I guess you could say too, would be the print function. So to, that, that would be to print something in the terminal. Once you start the program, it's going to print this, whatever we tell it to print right now. So let's just add some parameters, which we'll, we do by putting a bracket and a quote, because we're adding a text parameter. And you can put whatever you want to say in here, hello world. And then you can tell if it's a full quote, if it's read when you close off the other quotation and then you can see the rest is white that's a handy thing that came in with the latest version of computer craft so now we're gonna save then you wanna hit control again go to exit and now if you type programs you can see right up here print test that's the program we just made so if we run that it'll print hello world and now for some more in-depth uh, programming. 
we're going to go back into editing our print test. And next we're going to make what's called a function. You just type function like that. It'll turn yellow if you spelt it right, because I know many times I've had errors in my code because I spelt it wrong. Now we get to tell if we spelt it right. And let's just call it, I don't know, uh, print. Then you have to put two brackets. Now when you get into more advanced stuff for functions and whatnot, and having variables when you try to load a function, you're going to actually be putting something in these brackets, but for now we can just leave them empty. And then we can go all the way to the end of here, press enter, and we would hit end. And now if we just type print and put double brackets, it'll do exactly what it did before. It'll print hello world, but it's calling it from a preset function. So say we wanted to print hello world again, but we didn't want to have to write print hello world every time. Now we could just write print without typos. <laughs> Just type print, 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 and it will do that entire function sequence, which is very handy when it comes into having long lines of code that you want to be able to easily do again instantly instead of having to type, it, type out this huge set of code. You can just put the function name. So next, let's uh, use some if statements. Those are also very handy. So right now, we let's make a variable. Let's call it. Hmm. Uh, I like just calling them random things. Hello equals. What should we make it equal? Uh, yes. Well, let's just choose some random stuff. Now, for the if statement, type if. If you spelt it right, which you should, it will go yellow. And then we're gonna type hello. If hello equals, but for if statements, you need a double equals because you're testing it. So if it equal equals, <laughs> if it equals yes, then, then you go to the next line and whatever you type between that if statement and this new end that we made, it will happen if hello equals yes. But if it doesn't equal yes, it'll just do nothing and leave it. So what we want it to do is print hello equals yes and that's it so now since hello does equal yes it's going to print that so now let's go run our program print test and it does it multiple times because I put in the function multiple times back there so if you don't want to have to type out print test edit print test or whatever Again, you can press the up and down arrows just like in your uh, chat bar when you're in multiplayer. You can press the up and down arrows to go through what you just recently said. So you can press up, go to edit print test again. You can see down here how we have print, 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 print. That means it's going to do it five times or four times. So we can get rid of one of those. And now to add on to this, we can make it so... Instead of saying end right there, we'll put else. So if hello equals yes, then it'll print hello equals yes. But if it equals anything else, let's make it print hello doesn't equal yes. And now we have to put the end for the if function for the if statement. So right now we have the if has an end and the function also has an end. They Every chunk has to have its own end or else it's not going to work. So next we can just go control save exit. Now we can run our program again but it still equals yes. So now if we go back and edit we change hello from equaling yes we can change it to no and now if we save and exit run the program again it doesn't equal yes so this is really useful for things like password locks or something 
you can have your password preset in the hello variable here and if it equals yes then it'll give off a redstone signal or something and if it doesn't it'll tell you no and it won't give off the redstone signal so let's say you want to check if you want to check multiple if statements in the in the same thing so what you could do cuz since this is if and else. That's the only two you can use. But if you want to extend that a bit more, you can go else if. And that would be like another if statement. Else if hello equals no, then we can change this to hello equals no. So now if hello is equal to no, it will it will tell us that hello is equal to no. But then we can still also add the other else. And then we can print hello doesn't equal yes or no. And now if uh, let's save this and now if we change this to no then add a bunch of other stuff doesn't equal yes or no so that's the basics of the if function so I think that's enough for today the next tutorial I will be covering input so you can actually type in something in the program and it'll use that to change a variable or whatnot so, next episode, you can watch out for that. And thank you guys for watching. If you could leave a rating and a comment, tell me how I'm doing, it would be greatly appreciated.